Hi, I'm Nick Bernstein. I wanted to take a minute and talk about a subject that I think is, is pretty interesting to a lot of different people, and it's it's what we can see here on my screen. This uh this video is based on a post that I saw recently on Reddit in the Linux admin subreddit. And the uh the poster, Chillax J says, hello, our Linux admin. I'm trying to change my career from sales and marketing to the IT industry. And I want to start from the bottom since my work experience is not IT related. I was wondering if some certifications can boost my job opportunity at the entry level. I thought about getting some Microsoft certs, but I know that Linux will be the future for bigger enterprises. Uh, then he goes on to, to basically say, he's played around with Ubuntu as well as Raspberry Pi passed the CompTIA A+, last month, working on Cisco currently, but he doesn't have any Linux experience. I'm 100% noob. So, yeah, it's it's interesting. And, and some of the additional kind of stuff in the, in the comments, the original poster um, basically indicated that he had worked, uh, or she, uh, had worked in, in sales. And I thought this was a really interesting thing because... First off, there's the, the the technical question about how do you actually become a Linux administrator? And based on on kind of what the what the poster was was saying, the first thing that I kind of came to mind was should you? Do you want to? Um it seemed like this person was making a career change probably for a reason that a lot of people do, which is that working in IT generally pays reasonably well. Um, certainly that's the, the expectation. Um, working as a, a Unix admin, especially when I started, was an incredibly desirable skill set. And I still think it's, it's a very desirable skill set. But the salaries for an entry-level Unix admin uh, or Linux admin, sort of generally, are comparatively not as high as they used to be. Um, you can still make a very good salary, especially compared to the the sort of the the norm, um, you know, U.S. household um, average income, for example. But if you compare it to other things in the the tech industry, like programming, for example, you know, programming is probably going to be more lucrative. Um, that said, I personally still think that you should, if you're interested in tech, go down the route of, of at least seriously looking at being a Unix admin because I think it teaches you not only how operating systems work, uh, but it teaches you how to program in a very organic way that makes it a lot easier, I think, for many people to learn programming compared to uh, if you just go straight into programming itself. You also learn a lot about the, the underlying infrastructure. But that's not really what I wanted to talk about today. What I wanted to talk about was if you're switching or you're considering switching from a completely different industry, something like sales, something like marketing, being a graphic designer or, or something along those lines, and you're thinking about moving into IT, whether that's Linux specifically or Windows or becoming a DBA or becoming a programmer, what I want to go to do is give you a really important caution, which is this is a terrible life decision for a lot of people. Now, that's not for everybody. A lot of people will do this and love this. This is a career that I've had for a long time now. I've been working in tech since the mid 90s. Um, you know, I started learning Unix in about 1996 or so. Uh, and I was working in the the industry as a, as a professional, you know, by um by probably about 1999. So, you know, I um I got to experience the the dot com boom, and that led me to a really important realization, which is a lot of people were working in tech, not because they actually liked tech, but just because they saw that it was a good way to make money. And what that led to was a lot of really miserable people.
because the kinds of people who do well in tech are tinkerers. We're people who play around with stuff, have projects. Now, that may not be tech projects. If you're somebody who works on your car uh, or, you know, is it really into 3D printing um, or electronics, you're probably going to be fine in tech. But a lot of people won't be. And if you spend a huge amount of time and effort and resources to take this on, and then you realize five years in, after spending, you know, eight or nine months, maybe a couple years of studying after hours, of taking expensive tech classes, of leaving the stability of one career and all that additional stress that comes with it. You realize five years in, after all that, then maybe this wasn't the, the right choice for you. That's pretty tough. So here's my recommendation. If you're considering getting into tech, play with tech. The original poster here in this, it's a comment say that he has a Raspberry Pi. A Raspberry Pi is a great little device. If you're not familiar with it, um, it's like a $30 little computer that you can get. You can you can even get a Raspberry Pi 0 W. It's uh, like a 300 megahertz. It's tiny. Let me go well, I'll pull up my my computer. We'll we'll jump over and take a look. I'm going to go pull up the the Edge browser, which I know freaks a lot of people out. But it's not the one I I normally use. So if I do a quick search for Raspberry Pi You can go see that you can buy a Raspberry Pi uh, for, you know, around 30, 40 bucks. And you probably don't need to. If you have a normal, modern, recent PC, you can download VMware Workstation for free and run that on Windows. Install Linux into that. And that's got sort of a secondary bonus, which you get to play with VMware a little bit. And if you're brand new to tech, Virtualization is really important at this point. So you can get yourself a little Raspberry Pi, and then you can start setting up projects. You can try things. You can build your own little web server, your own little DNS server. You can set up a little Xbox media player, or whatever they're calling that now. Um, you know, Plex or, or something along, along those lines. Play around, set up projects. And then, importantly, take those projects to a place where things break. Where you need to go figure stuff out. Where you end up needing to go on searches down rabbit holes and, and trying to find the answers to difficult problems. Because that's what being a Unix admin is. Uh, another thing that you'll see is people posting these giant lists of things that you need to, to learn uh, in order to you know, be a, a Unix admin. Those skill sets are going to vary dramatically. Right? The most important skill set that you're going to have in IT and that, this is on the Windows side, this is on the Linux side, this is if you end up being a DBA, this is if you end up being a programmer. No matter what it is, the most important skill set by far is the ability to teach yourself stuff. So if you can go in and learn how to go set up a, a Linux box, how to go automate installations, how to go write shell scripts, do all that kind of stuff, at least to some extent on your own, that's phenomenal. Now, this video is a, a little bit biased because part of what I do is IT training. I teach Linux classes, uh, specifically SUSE. So if you're interested in Linux classes and you would like to learn in a more formal way, then 
by all means, <laughs> reach out to me. Um, get them directly through me. You can get them through through Fastlane. You can get certifications with them. But don't just do that. Learn on your own too, because that's a really important skill set. Have stuff to talk about in an interview. If you go to an interview and they say, all right, what do, what do you know about Linux? And you say, well, I got my Red Hat certification. And then there's just <laughs> like silence. Um, they're probably not going to hire you. If you say, oh, yeah, I got my LPI. Uh, and uh, after that, I set up my my home little you know web server. And that was pretty interesting. Then I realized maybe I should run mail on here. So I set up Postfix. Uh, and I set up a Postfix mail server, and I've been playing around with Dovecote. And um, that sort of led me down this thing where I'm, I'm trying to get Spam Assassin really kind of dialed in. All right, now we're talking, and the person who's interviewing you is going to say, okay, this is somebody who's passionate uh, about doing this. This is somebody who is interested in this. And that means they can hire you with a lot more confidence about whether or not they need to handhold you because that was, that's what happens a lot. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're going to be valuable in it, you need to at least be somewhat autonomous. That's just kind of the way it is. You're going to have tasks that kind of come down the pipeline and whoever it is that you're, you're reporting to is going to want to be able to say like, Hey, this is the stuff that's on fire right now. <laughs> Go take care of it. Let me know, you know, kind of where we're at throughout the day. And then also, you know, how are you going to go about, um, you know, planning new stuff within fighting fires? It's a really interesting job. It's a very challenging job. It's one that's not for everybody. So before you spend all this time, figure out if it's for you. Once you do figure out it's for you, great. Now let's go potentially pursue certifications um, and you know, honestly, when it comes to things like Linux certifications, they're all kind of fine. Um, whether it's Red Hat or SUSE or an LPI or, or whatever it is, they're all fine, right? It's 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 that's only for HR, if if we're going to be honest, right? So the certifications are there so HR can say, oh, this person has a Linux cert let me put this resume on the list of ones I'm going to go forward to the people who are actually making the decisions, right? That's what the certs are for, right? The certs don't really prove that, you know, you know, Unix, right? <laughs> Trust me. I've worked with Canonical, you know, on their certification. I've worked with SUSE on their certification. I've been through a bunch of certification stuff. They're there to get you through the initial phase of the hiring process because most people in human resources have no idea what this stuff means, right? So just to narrow the scope down so that somebody who actually knows what they're talking about can can hire. Now, there are ex exceptions to that, but, but generally that's the case. So if you want some advice, you think about getting into IT, you know, make sure that it's for you. Set up projects, play around, learn some stuff. Um, all of that is going to be helpful when you do get your certification. Uh, and it's, you know, just generally a good idea. So anyway, um, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Um, I'm probably gonna be posting more of these uh, on different topics and questions and things that come up. Uh, if you're hearing a little bit of background noise, that's my dog bits. You can tell that I'm a nerd. <laughs> uh, at some point, I'm probably gonna get a bigger dog. Uh, her will named Killer Bits, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, if you like this, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm going to be posting more videos on uh, just sort of general IT DevOps uh, kind of topics, answering questions based on things that I see in various different forums, and maybe it'll be helpful for you, especially if you're new to this. So have a great day. Take care of yourself. Good luck working on IT.